everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Friends in the Wild podcast. I hope you're watching in person because as you can see, our setting is different and we have some guests with us today. We are on the road, y'all. And we have people that we don't really like, but they beg to be on the podcast, so we said sure. Yeah, every week they're constantly begging. Um, so we do have two special guests and they are our um, significant others. So let's get Colin's introduction out of the way really quick. He's returning. He True. is longtime fan, longtime listener, my fiance, Colin Trent. What's up, guys? And that's all he wrote. <laughs> Moving on to the more exciting, the newcomer, the newbie. What is he? What's the title? No one really knows, but maybe they'll tell us. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's Ryan Morgan, my good friend and acquaintance. Hello. And he's driving us to Knoxville right now. Um, I think he's slightly nervous to be sponsored on, not sponsored, featured on the Friends in the Wild podcast. Um, so just try to make him feel welcome, audience members. Uh, make him feel like he's free to share in this episode. This is a safe space. Yeah. Unless you say something we don't like. Yeah. And then we'll say We our... need to have Ron tell a little about himself. Yeah. Ron, just, like could you just like maybe two? give... A little bit of information about you, you know, like where do you live, um, how do we know each other, that kind of thing. Yeah, well, me and Grace went to high school together, and now I live with Colin. So, we're being very vague, as we can tell. Um, we all went to high school I was together. I to say, did you just omit me and Colin from <laughs> your mind? <laughs> we all went to school together. We all went to school, went to high school together. Um, yeah, and we've known each other forever. Well, actually, we went to the same middle school and, and elementary school and everything. We didn't know Ron until freshman year. Yeah. In our math class that we all had together. Right. That's when we met. Um, Ron, what are you majoring in? Majoring in finance. This is going to be like my fifth year for a bachelor's degree, but we're getting there. I, apparently, we are sharing in, in this episode. Um, I like slow and steady wins the race. Yeah, so. you know, sometimes you just have to try out every other option before you can decide what you want to do. And that's okay. So we support you in that. <laughs> I think we really need to jump on the opportunity to dive into Colin and Ron's newfound relationship. I agree. Um, have them just really share what it's been like living together as everyone knows, Laura Grace and I kind of manifested that our men become friends. And we manifested so hard they became roommates. Yep. So it's time to give the mic over to the boys to share what it's been like living together. Colin? All right, guys. So Ryan and I live together, obviously, is what they have said. And we don't live in the same room with one another. He's on the opposite side of the house. But, uh... But yeah, it's been good. He fits right in with me, Billy, and Trey. Uh, it's not too hard to, but uh, but thankfully we have Ryan because Billy loves baseball. He knows everything about baseball, and so does Ryan. So they have something to talk about now. So Billy's not there just on his computer 24-7. It's like, hey, where's Ryan? Let me talk some baseball. And so me and Trey are very grateful for that. Uh, <laughs> it's a burden lifted. But, uh, but no, uh, we're all good roommates. Uh, and then I'll let... Ron talk a little bit about it, what we eat, what we go shopping for, everything like that. So, it's been really nice having somebody I know in a new town, new place. He's really kind of welcomed me in. And uh, number one place we eat, Thai food. It's called House of Thai. Give us a sponsorship. And... Uh, not a whole lot. We like to play pickleball, go to the fit, you know. Maybe get Chick-fil-A on Mondays. They got a good discount. That's all I got. Where do you all shop? What were you saying by that? <laughs> well, sometimes we like to go in together, as in, like, money-wise, so split it. Uh, so sometimes we'll split the bread or we'll buy two packs of chicken, you know, eat one pack one night and save the other for, you know, whenever we need it. Uh <laughs> We split the cheese with our sandwiches. You're uh, just you're just explaining going grocery shopping with roommates. <laughs> yeah, 
but we went to Ross one time. Oh, well, yeah, not yeah, we did. So you've been to Ross. So yeah, we've been to Ross, but no, we also go to we've been to all these. Yeah. But all these is kind of like a. Great... Colin puts the quarter in the buggy and I push it around. Say it again, Ron. You didn't have the mic. Colin puts the quarter in the buggy at Aldi's, and I get to push it around, so it's equal. Yeah, and speaking of quarters, we also, when we go to Ralph's, which is a famous little donut shop in uh, Cookville, uh, Ryan always buys his donut first. And We're so, both cash men, so yeah, we pay yeah. in cash. We don't, we don't carry cards. Uh, yeah, we do. But, uh, but Ryan always saves his quarters for me. When I order second, because it's always like two dollars and twenty five cents. Oh, so that's then actually I'm, really sweet. Yeah, so <laughs> say, that's kind of cute. So I have a bunch of quarters in my car, uh, so that's nice. Uh, but yeah, Food City, Walmart, just w- honestly wherever we can get pretty good discounts. But yeah. Okay, next question: What is your favorite thing about one another? Um, uh, I would say Ron's willingness to. Go out and get food together. <laughs> Seriously, because it'll be late at night. I get done with clinical at seven, which is a late supper for a normal person. And I'm like, dude, I'm kind of hungry. And he's like, me too. And we're like synchronized. We're like, Ta? And we're like, yes. So then we go to Ta. And so there's a cool guy there. He obviously, he's a Thailander. And he, the other day, me and Ryan, and this is like probably our fourth time in a row going i was like hey do you have something similar to my crispy bulgogi that i like and he was like uh no not really and i was like okay i was like let me look and then he's like do you want it or not and so me and ryan just kind of looked at each other but it was you had to be there in person for it to be pretty funny but me and ryan it's still just kind of a funny thing to talk about you all have a bond yeah we have a good bond ron your turn what's your favorite thing about colin my favorite thing about Colin would be um, that he's been so welcoming. So, Wow, Colin just went on a three-minute rant about how much he loves you. <laughs> Actually, it was only about how much he loves getting food with him. I mean, he only likes him maybe at three points in the day. He loves the food, and he's just happy that you're willing to sit <laughs> with him at the table. And also, he's been my ride. So, for the first three months, I've not had a car. It's been tore up, so... I didn't have a vehicle, and Colin has towed me back and forth from our hometown to college. So, um, your favorite thing about Colin is his vehicle. I just use him, basically. And that's actually an excellent segue into something else that we have to discuss. Mally, take it away. Um, so guys, really everyone should just be happy that Friends and Wild Podcast still has two members and not just one host. We were talking about, you know, if something ever happened to one of us. Something unfortunately did happen to me. Luckily, I survived. Um, So, I was leaving work literally yesterday. So, we're recording on Saturday. Yesterday morning, I was leaving work and I fell asleep driving and I wrecked my car and totaled it. (laughs) So, it's been an interesting past 24 hours. I luckily am fine. I don't have any like physical injuries or anything like that. My bank account, however, will probably suffer some consequences of my own actions, but I really don't know. I think I seriously might have like a disease or something where I just cannot stay awake. I was drinking an Alani at 6.30 in the morning and fell asleep at 8.10 driving home. And she was like literally less than a mile probably from her house. Yeah, so... So, my car is totaled, and now I just added on the list of things I can't make a decision about. Now I have to get a new car. That's kind of exciting, though, even though it's going to cost a lot of money. But also, tell the people about the Life360 debacle. Oh, yeah. So, whenever I... Okay, also, what I hit, I ran off the road and I hit a fence, but this fence was unlike the normal. For the fence post, it's literally tree trunks. So... (laughs) I took down three tree trunks because the way the road is, when it, like, whenever the road on the side ends, it's like a drop-off, and I drive a Honda Accord, so I could not get my car back onto the road. Plus, like, I was unconscious until I slammed into a tree trunk. So I took down three of them, and, like, there's a trunk, tree trunk, wedged into my door. 
but I guess whenever I wrecked, my phone either fell on the floorboard or it just sensed the sudden stop in motion. And it sent a message to literally everyone who has my location. So even like our old group from high school got a notification that was like, Mally has possibly been in a collision. Please check on her. <laughs> and I got a notification on my phone, but obviously in the moment I was so frazzled. I didn't, do, I was like, okay, whatever. It was like, if you don't log in and say that you're fine, we will contact. And I was like, I really don't, I need to call 911 yeah. actually. So I had everyone texting me like, hey, I just got a note, like I don't even have Live360 anymore, but I got a notification, are you okay? And I was like, actually no, I just wrecked. So if you need a plug for knowing if Live360 is accurate, it is. And so. then it might become less accurate because Mally gaslit it into thinking that she didn't actually wreck. Well, I thought <laughs> it like, when you get on the app, it makes you answer like, were you in a collision or not? I hit no because I was afraid it would call 911. You hit no also like six hours after it happened. Yeah, it was yeah. like 5 p.m. at this point. So we were afraid that if she hit yes, it would be like 911. Yeah. Like, and we'd be <laughs> like, no, 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 never mind. Yeah, like the damage has already been done, so I just hit no. And then it texted everyone that I was okay and it was a false alarm. Yeah, it sent another text. So it was not a false alarm, but at least yeah. the cops weren't called again. Yeah. But I think that was my first like real car wreck I've ever been in yeah and it was horrific I don't recommend but luckily I didn't have to experience the whole seeing the wreck before it happens because unfortunately my eyelids were closed <laughs> but true you know it could have been worse could have been a lot worse so I'm lucky that definitely I didn't suffer any physical harm very but my car is extremely harmed very lucky but anyways that's very thankful very thankful grateful blessed you need to tell them how days. you felt about giving me a hug seeing me oh person. well you know i was coming home yesterday on the day that it happened and this was at like 8 a.m and i had gotten the notification at like eight something but i didn't see it until i was sitting down in torts class and i was like oh my gosh like i haven't heard from her omg you know, kind of like freaking out a little bit. So I messaged her like three times. And then when I got out of torch, she still hadn't, hadn't answered. And I was like, okay, well, I knew that she was at home. So I figured like you were probably okay. Or I would have heard about it by then, but I was still kind of like, what the heck? So I texted your mom and your mom was like, yeah, tell me what happened. And, um, so anyway, driving home, I was like, me and Mally, we have to have like a hug today. We have to schedule it in because she could have died. Um, and I was also thinking about two other things regarding your wreck. First of all, just a couple weeks ago, you said to me completely randomly that if anything ever happened to you, you would want me to continue the podcast. Have we already talked about yeah, that? Yeah, we told the podcast. It's just, I'm telling you, apparently if I talk about something on the podcast, yeah. it's going to happen. It's like immediate so, manifestation. Honestly, I'm just kind of so over this year. <laughs> and I'm going to stop saying anything on the pod that podcast yeah. that could potentially be Say wrong. Say no, like, possible scenarios. Yeah. I'm just Unless it's like laugh. Yeah. Because you know? honestly, like, that's like extra manifestation. It's not just like saying it to yourself or saying it to, like, your friend. We're putting this out into the, yeah. the world forever. But, so. yeah, so luckily the podcast goes on for one more week. <laughs> with two hosts. We're, we're on a week-by-week week basis at but this But we point. actually hugged twice yesterday, which we is did. a new record. I think we're just going to have to start hugging. Sorry. I know. I'm glad this put it into perspective for you. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm, like a, I'm like not really a hugger, but more so than you probably. So I'm always down I for it. I feel like I'll become a hugger now that I've had a near-death experience. <laughs> yeah. Now that you know what you could be missing. <laughs> Life. No, but I really am thankful that I am okay. One more thing about your wreck. Um, so I have also totaled a vehicle in my day, and the way that we totaled the vehicles looks exactly the same. And it was in very close location yeah, to one another. Yeah, it was both, like, on the same way home to our houses, so. Yeah, you ripped the front tire off of your car also. Yeah. Front so, passenger tire. It's the same exact thing. I had to do it to mine. I was just wanting to be so... I knew your birthday episode came out, and I was like, <laughs> I need some attention. So, and you I got it. my car. So, also, it's Heritage Days in our town, as we discussed last week. And last night, everyone was coming up to Mally and saying they were so glad that she was okay. So, she 
succeeded in getting um, attention. I didn't get as much attention today as I would have liked, right. but last night, like, it was just pouring in. Yeah. The you could always, mail was You could going. always wreck your rental car um, if you need more. I'm good. You know, like, I've had my fun. I'll take a break. <laughs> Maybe when I get my new car. Actually, um, I'm not saying that because it'll yeah, probably happen. Yeah, seriously, don't say that. Um, but anyway, Heritage Days is going on. It's been so much fun. So Anything? right now, we're on our way to the UT game. Yeah, so shout out to Dustin Hayes, who definitely does not listen to our podcast, but he should. Um, we so we ran into him, and he was like, do you guys want to take us to the game tonight? And we had talked about going. It's the Tennessee-Florida game. Um but we hadn't found tickets, and I was like, actually, yeah. So we gave us four tickets, and now we're on our way. So, yeah. A little this spontaneous. This has been like a crazy little intro. A lot yeah. going on. But I think we covered it all. And this week, we are going to do kind of like our version of the newlywed game, although none yeah. of us are wed. <laughs> and some of us won't even put a title on things. <laughs> but <laughs> we're going to play a game where we ask questions about, like, who knows each other better, or like, what would your partner choose? Things like that. See which couple knows the other. How long have you all been together? Like three years, okay, give or take. And Colin and I have been together six and a half years. So, enough time under our belts that we should know our partner, yeah, well enough to answer these questions. Yeah. So we'll see which team wins. So I've collected some questions. Um, I hope they're good. I don't know. But okay. we'll ask you guys first, and then we'll do us, okay? Okay. So we're starting off easy. We've actually already practiced this question last night. So this is number one. What is your partner's favorite color? Colin's favorite color is blue. Mally's favorite color is purple. Is that correct? Ding, ding, ding. Okay. Ron's favorite color is brown. No, it's not. Yes, it is. LG's favorite color is pink. Correct. Was that right? Ryan, who told you LG's Wait, it's favorite... green. It's green. I knew it was green. <laughs> Ryan, who told you LG's favorite color is pink? I just knew. Nobody had to, nobody had to tell That's me that. That's a lie. <laughs> lie detector test. <laughs> um, Ryan's lying. I had to tell him that last night. You thought that my favorite color was your favorite color. Okay. I, he said last night that my favorite color was green, um, which I am, I'm kind of in like a green phase right now, but like overall, my favorite color is always going to be pink, you know? LG, you're also forgetting to give Ron the mic, so just a little heads up. Oh, He's yeah. speaking, but into the abyss. <laughs> it's just going to be like a tiny little mouse And talking. Ron was there. <laughs> Come okay, hear him, next say. question. Who is more competitive between you two? Colin true i don't know i can get pretty fired up you definitely yeah, can yeah mally gets fired up when she's more so not doing as well <laughs> however she's doing good then you know she's she's not too bad but you put me on a putt putt course i'm gonna act a fool unfortunately i'm gonna say things i will regret later for putt putt or yeah. pickleball oh gosh i would agree you handle your competitiveness better than I handle yeah, mine. <laughs> I would say so. I would think that it would be Colin, probably. Because I've seen him play pickleball. And it's never a joke. It's always, like, no. so for real. That's the thing. Like, I can I can play as a joke. Colin can't play as a joke. Yeah. <laughs> it's never a joke to him. It's life or death. But if I'm going out, if you ask me to play pickleball, why would I go halfway? Because it's just for fun. No, I only like, ask you to play for but fun. <laughs> do everything 110%, and then, like, that's the way I view it. So, if I'm going to go play something or partake in it, at least the first game, I'm going to give it my all. And then, if I, you know, need them to get their confidence up, I'll let them get some points. Okay. Gotcha. At the fit, Colin asked people to play a light game of basketball. He goes 100%, 110% after saying light game. Well, here's the thing. First off, I didn't ask. It was Brad who was like, hey, y'all want to run twos? And so we were like, yeah, there's four rows, so let's do it. So Ryan was like, hey, I'll watch. So it's people I knew. And uh, so I was like, yeah, let, let's do it. And they, I mean, we were still goofing around, but yes, I was going pretty hard. And I have a testimony about this too, Ryan. I take your side. 
rare, I know. But I got roped into playing a game of basketball at the fit one time with this said group of boys. I'm the only girl. We get in the car, I get a 10 minute lecture about how a bounce pass is not an effective <laughs> pass. <laughs> and how I'm a terrible passer because I have to look at where I'm passing it because I can't pass without looking. That's really funny. At the ripe age of 22, playing <laughs> recreational pickup pick ball at basketball. the fitness center with boys. Yeah. I couldn't get a, good job, Mally. You know, it was impossible. Yeah, so. or like a, that was fun, I'm glad you played. No. Yeah. Anyways, enough about us. Between you two, who's the most competitive? I would say definitely Ryan. Definitely me. Do you think definitely? For sure. Yeah, I'm always just there to have fun. Like, pretty much all the time. I didn't, like, I view you both as kind of like not super competitive people, but Ron, what are you competitive about? Um, it depends on the people, but I will say I've probably never lost a board game, and that's that's true. Oh, I've definitely beat you in Scrabble. Okay, actually, though, in Scrabble, no, no. I'm super competitive. That is true. Lara Grace gets, like, rude. Mally, one time, Mally made up a word, and I was ready to end our friendship. We fought about it for at least three <laughs> weeks. So you all are more competitive in, like, mind games. Colin and I are more competitive in physical games. It involves yeah. a ball. I would say that's true. Yeah. Unless I'm just not good at it. Like, golf, I go and have fun. Yeah. That's one thing, because I can't really control where that ball goes. Unless it's, like, <laughs> you're chipping bad. or putting. I mean, yeah, I'm not, I'll be the first to tell you I'm not the best, but. You're better at chipping and putting than driving? Oh, yes, for sure. It's because we go to the. We go to the chipping green at night. Yep. So, oh, yeah. new fun yeah. fact unlocked. Just another, just another similarity they have. Mm-hmm. That's where we practice. Laura Grace and I are having get are having to get used to them like say things yeah. that we possibly don't know that they do together. <laughs> so we're not used to them. It's weird hanging out and knowing things about each it's other. Weird, so. weird, weird. Um, yeah, I think neither of us are like really. We're we're pretty usually laid back. I would say more so Ryan than me on the laid back aspect in particular okay who would survive longest in a zombie apocalypse or let's just say not necessarily zombie apocalypse but like a situation where like you have to kind of fend for yourself like physically you know so are we like mally and i are together no you or mally and then we'll do us versus you i would say me for sure just because of the are can the zombies run No, I'm asking. Because it, it, if it's like, I am legend zombies, then we're all dead. But okay. if it's like walking dead, I think I can hold my own for a little bit until I just get tired of it. I feel like it's more so like you just have to, like, on a desert deserted island, you know? Like, you have to, like, build a fire, maybe, me, like, kill some stuff. Me, for sure. Okay. I, I have, I'm the type of guy that watches all the videos on how to survive. Like, what? what what's the... Like an I survived book, maybe? Yeah, maybe. Something crazy like that. Like, I'm always outside doing something, so I feel like I can hopefully put some thoughts together and and hopefully survive a little bit. I just want it to be known that I can run. You can run. <laughs> can the zombies run? <laughs> like, I, I'm actually a decent distance runner. <laughs> Sprints maybe not my strongest, but I, I know how to run. Yeah. Like, I, yeah. I would be okay. I don't know why you had to say that, but... Um, <laughs> I don't think I would last, like, a long time, but I think I could... Yeah. No, I don't myself. think you'd be, like, dead instantly. Definitely not. Oh, thanks. thanks. Okay, for us, it, this is, like, unquestionably Ryan. He can kind of, like... He, he could live in the woods, like, yeah, I think, for the a very The zombie could say, time. Laura Grace, look over there, and you'd look and it'd stab you or something. Oh, I was actually going for, he's really good at it, not that I would be really bad at no, it. No, he might okay. be really good at it, but you're also very oblivious. <laughs> Second of True. all, zombies don't stab you. They will bite you or scratch you. They might have a knob. No, they don't have they the mindset have to... I don't know what zombies movies and shows you guys are watching, but they usually have no weapons. Yeah, and the they're zombie just running couldn't say, you, or... look over there. <laughs> yeah. They I'm can't sorry. speak. Anyway, Ron, what do you have to say? I would say me, and I'm saying that because my mom has got me... Not really got me, but she's been adamant about bug out kits as she says and each 
Christmas, birthday, everything now, we get supplies for a zombie apocalypse, basically. So, so uh-huh. she's prepared you. What are some yeah. items that she's given you? No, like live straws and like forever matches or whatever you call them. The ones that can get wet and they still light. Just junk That's like that. That's actually a really good gift. She's like a, she's like prepping you. Is she a doomsday prepper, possibly? I don't know. I think she's turning into one. But also, she's been preparing for the the doomsday. And anytime me or my brother go somewhere, she texts and asks us how long it would take us to walk home. (laughs) So you've been you were born being taught how to survive. We need. I give an approximate one week from college to my home. I can make it there in one week walking. Oh, I think you could do it faster. Yeah, totally. Walking? Also, yeah, walking. It's like, I don't know. It's like <laughs> 130 miles. <laughs> Plus, you got a whole mountain to walk up. I see my trucks in the I way. Think you can, <laughs> a, can an average person walk like 25 miles in a day or something like that? So that would be like no. a week, yeah. Maybe if they're from those countries where they're um, going 24-7. Ron, you need to shout out your mom's YouTube channel. I was about to say that. Shout out. Poor Valley Princess on all platforms. Yeah, she has a YouTube channel and it's really, she's like definitely giving like Paula Dean. Would it offend her if I said she was giving Paula Dean vibes or is that a good thing? Okay. Um, yeah, she's like giving Paula, and she's also a listener, so she'll be, she'll definitely be watching this episode. Since also, she, since we had the hurricane debacle where we, some people probably found themselves slightly unprepared, um, I saw that she's going to do a video about how to prepare for natural disasters like that. So this is kind of the same vibe, like doomsday or just natural disaster preparations. So we'll hold her accountable to that, and we'll be watching it. We were with her when we found out we were coming here, and she was like, did you know Knoxville almost just got blown off the map? And uh, I didn't know that. And she acted like that was normal news. So I I don't know. (laughs) She's always preparing for the worst case scenario. So she is our girl. If someone's going to survive, it'll be her. <laughs> yeah. Did Knoxville see, like, true. high winds or something? I don't know. We really need to look that, like, headline up. Something so about like Donovan. Alert or whatever. Oh. It was bomb material. Wow. Oh, yeah. She said they found, like, bomb material. I don't know. So which couple do we think would survive longer? Uh, Essentially, this is kind of just, like, Ryan versus Colin. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be humble and say Ron is a pretty daggum good handyman. Yeah. I've seen some stuff he can make with wood and, like, I'm just, I can't compete with that. Yeah. So, I would have to, like I say, I would, I would. Do you say you're in admiration of Ron? In that sense, yes. I is would this say. this a love story blossoming before our eyes? <laughs> it really is. You let him show you some of his products and it's like, dang, some Ron, that's products. pretty good. Wow. He made a guitar. Impressive. You could sing the zombies away. Yeah. What am I going to do with a guitar in a zombie apocalypse? Hit them with it. But maybe I can put them in a trance. (laughs) You can sing the song off of Barbie. (laughs) I want to push you around. Yeah. You can, you can like turn the zombies to your side. Well, in the Call of Duty, uh, there was one, I don't know which one it is, Ryan might know, where it was like a monkey and you would chuck the monkey. And it would like cool, oh, yeah. clap its it hands them. like this, it and it was like, it, it, it gets away. their attention. But what the zombies don't know, it's a bomb. So <laughs> they all go to it, and then it explodes. Oh, so that could be a great honestly, strategy. yeah. But Ryan would have to make it self plan because if he's playing it, then it bombs, and then Ryan's dead. So if I was in a zombie apocalypse, all I would need is a stem. And I would just, when they get really close to me, I would hit a stem, slide cancel away, yeah. and then I'd be okay. Car 98 to the forehead. They're literally speaking other languages right now. Well, you all are not our target demographic, and I'm sure <laughs> our listeners We're are equally. Media. Oh, also, I'm going to tell the podcast that Ryan wants to do an episode of with just him and Colin, without me and Mally. And we say no. So, put that in the comments as if you would listen. I think bros in college needs their own platform that's I said literally what they would yeah do. I said that's literally just you and Colin starting a podcast but whatever you can't use our already existing platform our huge platform yeah, literally yeah, with all of our listeners we'll shout you out Don't you can worry. be like a sponsor but you're not getting our platform anyway next question Colin this is kind of specifically for you I think you'll enjoy this question 
If they could domesticate any animal and keep it as a pet, what animal would they choose? Mm. Is it? Can it be nos? Yeah, like, it can be. It, yeah, it can it'll be, be like house trained. Okay, so okay. Ooh. But you have to think what I would want. I would have to say just because they're adorable in every sense, uh, a panda. That's a good one. I think I would like to have a panda. For you? Oh my god. How would I ever even choose? I know. If anyone loves animals, it's oh, Colin. I was for you? <laughs> yes. Good gosh, she said That's this is what I just told you. So his answer is a panda. Oh, but yeah. Yeah. yeah You're, okay, sure. now answer for me. Okay, for Mally? I mean, you, you like pandas. Uh, for Mally. Oh gosh. I would have to say, like, probably a panda. I mean, you think they're adorable, too. I do. I would say for you, though, I wouldn't have said panda. I would have probably said, like, a shark. Something. Yeah. I, you love sharks. Yeah. God. I find them fascinating. Uh, oh, a shark? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they're, yeah, they're, yeah. That but you could pet? Yeah, but how are you going to play with a shark? Throw it some meat? Yeah. Watch it bite? I don't I would, know what you would want. I would probably pick a dolphin as a sea creature if I had to pick one, because they're... They're pretty nice. Colin, anytime we see a turtle in the road, he, like, will get angry if we don't stop and relocate this turtle. I do that, too. I have to stop. So now I've started to st- I mean, even if I'm in a hurry or a dangerous location, I have to stop. Colin also will, like, double fist frogs and bring them into my kitchen. So... Double fist. <laughs> two frogs. <laughs> two frogs. <laughs> so it's just... It's... It's a quirk. He also makes us watch Planet Earth. So. Ryan, do you know what I would choose? I have like a definite one in mind, but I don't know that you would know this. For you, I th- I don't know. I really kind of like have no idea. Do you have a guess for me? Koala bear. You have no guess. Um... Is a, it a, a baby deer that never grows up? That's that's really close. That's Honestly, close. like maybe that's my answer. That's fair. But what I was thinking was a baby bear, like a bear cub. Oh, that's I've cute. Always wanted. Yeah, my my guess was a little close. I it. guessed a koala bear. Yeah. I, I'm thinking like a baby like black bear. Oh, they're so cute, but you can't get close to them I'm because their mom bear. will come at you. Well, polar bears are just so mean. Yeah, but guys, it's becoming a house pet. Yeah, we changed the rules. Okay, if it if it like won't become mean, I don't know. I think I think black bears are so cute. They're the cutest of the bears. Not that I usually like to choose favorites. All right, now we're on. What would yours be? Wait, you have to guess what his would be. I... Right? Yeah. Tell us again. You like you like baby animals a lot. I feel like. Okay, I'll pull up the TikToks you send me. To prove it. The receipt. Um, I don't. Do you want a baby deer? No. You want a grown-up deer? I would probably just stick with a dog, honestly. Boring. So. Maybe a. No, just a dog. Or a raccoon. Oh, that would be cute. I was thinking. Sorry, go ahead, ahead, LG. When I was little, I always wanted a raccoon. Kangaroo. A kangaroo. And then it can, but you can put stuff in its pouch. Yeah. And carry things for you. Kangaroo could cool. be cool. That would be so useful. Okay. Which one of you? Hey, will you swap up? I'm getting a call. Okay. Um, which one of you gives better gifts? This is a hard question, because Colin's actually a very good gift giver. He's very considerate. Like, just yesterday, I got a boo basket Aww, for cute. Halloween in my darkest hour. He pulled through. <laughs> um, I don't know. Obviously, I, my love language is kind of like gift giving, so I try to take good, like a little bit of pride in the gifts that I give. I mean, it might be like 60 40, you being 60, me being 40, because yours say, are like bigger items, like Zach Brown concert, like in Nashville. So it's like, it's more of an effort to kind of get those things rolling because we have to drive there. So it's a whole process. It's a whole day of, you know, let's eat lunch, supper, then let's go to the concert, and then let's drive six hours back home. Okay. Uh, Sound like you didn't enjoy it. It was very fun. <laughs> uh, but yeah. I would, I would say, say probably about a tie. 
Yeah. 50 50. Yeah. Okay. Between the it's, two of you? It's definitely Ryan. Every answer to these questions has been Ryan. And I promise I didn't choose them with any bias, but it's definitely been, it's definitely Ryan. He is the most thoughtful gift giver that I've ever met in my life. Oh. <laughs> say it's you? No, no, no. I can't do that. I can't say it's me. It's LG. She gets me thoughtful and handmade gifts, which I love. You actually definitely think it's you, too. You know that it's you. <laughs> I have to say, Ron does give good gifts. He does give really good he gifts. He makes her stuff, and, like, he makes her little origami stuff out of dollars all the time. <laughs> He's, like, 12. Yeah, but it's just very thoughtful stuff. I will have to say, LG gets me things that usually might have to be returned. So... <laughs> She like doesn't know what size I wear or if I sometimes I already have the thing she gets me, which I would never say anything, but then she realizes that I already have it and it has to be returned. Okay, so I got him some shorts that were like cool shorts. I still haven't got them anymore actually. But I took them back and exchanged them once because it wasn't like the inseam that he wanted and then they still weren't the right size, so I just gave them to my brother. Um, and then I never got Ryan some, but I also got him a puzzle one time. He's, he's a big puzzle guy, um, that he already had. And then I walked into his basement and it was being built and I was like, okay, I'm going to have to get you something else for Christmas. And actually I was going to do that puzzle like while I was home over the summer and I couldn't find it cause I didn't send it back anyway. So yeah, the answer's Ryan. Next question. Um, if they were to choose a superpower, what superpower would they choose? Um, I think Colin would choose to fly. Yeah, it's easy. Uh, I think with Mally, I would think it'd be like to read minds or That's something. That's so true. Even though I don't want it to be that, I want to fly, but I'm so nosy. I want to know what everyone's thinking. Yeah. But you, okay. Never mind. I, I, we'll answer first, and then we'll talk about okay. this. I think we were just talking about this the other day, and you said it, but I can't remember. So I'm going to guess flying or being able to teleport. Yeah. Being able to what? Teleport. That's what I said. Teleport. I said teleport. Did you say teleport? Yeah, I said teleport. <laughs> I think they also stole ours because, or maybe it's just like, a guy thing and a girl thing because fly teleport and lg would definitely want like telekinesis or something yeah the other day um me and my cousins were playing a game and this was one of the questions and i said it would mine would be to read minds but i would have to be able to turn it off oh i but i like don't want the guilty consciousness of knowing like if people have committed crimes and stuff like that like it's That's strictly true. to know gossip and gossip only yeah. and then when i want to like have a restful moment I can turn it off yeah I, I would want to be able to like think of something like I wouldn't want to be able to just read whatever they were saying but like I would like to be able to like ask a question in my mind and be able to know what their answer would be Ooh, that's you know? good yeah and then wow. you like you're completely in control of what what information you're getting you know yeah you'd yeah. have either immense peace or the exact opposite yeah so um, okay. This is just a quick one, and I was just curious if everyone knew each other's. What is their zodiac sign? Colin is an Aries. Yeah. Shoot. We almost witnessed a wreck. Uh, I don't pay attention to zodiac signs or gemstone or birthstones or whatever. So I don't know. But when's my say when's my birthday? November twenty second is your birthday. Take a guess at what my zodiac sign is. Uh, Aries. Colin, you're an Aries. <laughs> oh. Uh, sorry. I didn't hear it. a car accident almost happened. My mom went straight to that. Same. Uh, is it like a goddess or something? Yes. <laughs> How'd you know? I told you. I don't know how these things are. Are you a from. Sagittarius? Uh, sorry. Sagittarius. <laughs> yeah, I'm a Sagittarius. I would never have guessed that. So. Okay, Ryan's a Taurus. Do you know what I am? Mm, November. The Pisces. No. The season right now. 
I don't, I don't know what's of the Wait, I know, I know. What? Oh. Are you a Libra? Yeah. And then the next is Scorpio, right? The next one after Mon? Yeah. I thought it was Libra, Libra and then straight to Sagittarius. Oh, I don't know. Uh, there might be one. I'm not sure. I don't know. Anyways. Um, okay. Who is their celebrity crush? Colin's celebrity crush is Margot Robbie. Ding, ding, ding. Don't get too excited there. Uh, Mally's a grief. Let's see here. There's quite a few of them. I know you're thinking and it's not that. No, 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 no. I just gotta... Th well... My all-time favorite actor, man crush. If you weren't in the car right now, I'd say love of my life. Shut up. He probably still is. Uh... <laughs> Colin. I have no clue. What show? Is he on a show or something? Four. Four? Yeah. Four shows? No. <laughs> That's his character's name. Uh, four? Whose nickname is Yeah, get over here. Theo James. That's yours? Yes. Oh, I didn't know. I was going to say, like, the dude that plays The Witcher or something. No. He's, he's tough, but. Okay, Ryan's is Emma Stone. Correct. Yeah. Um, he talks about her at school, LG. <laughs> <laughs> I would say Laura Grace's celebrity crush would be. Um, Ryan Gosling. Nah, he's like not like top. My top ones would be probably. Honestly, I've really been into Post Malone recently. Oh gosh, <laughs> she's always loved that man. I, like his music, I but... love Post Malone. Um, I love Jacob Elordi. Don't know. Mm. Oh, Joe Burrow. I, that's what I thought Colin was going to say, because Colin, for some reason, thinks that I'm in love with Joe Burrow. I am in love with Joe And, I mean, Joe he's Burrow. easy on the eyes, I'm not going to lie, but I'm not in love with him. No, he's, like, I'm kind of obsessed with him. Also, I really like Travis Kelsey recently has looked really good. The game starts in 19 minutes. We yeah. are... Right outside. Nah. Yeah, I mean, like, we're about to drive by. <laughs> yeah, we got a minute. Um, we'll hear the roar of the kickoff. Okay, so let's do one more question and then wrap this baby up. Wrap her up. Okay, which one of you, what's your first memory of your person? Well, we all know my first memory. That should also be Colin's first <laughs> oh, yeah. memory, but he denies it, which is dumb. Uh, first good memory. That was a good memory okay. for me until you <laughs> ruined it when we got engaged. Um, I guess I'll try to think of a different memory. I guess I'll say of when we started dating. Um, my first memory of when Colin like liked me was when I had my wisdom teeth removed going into our sophomore year and I was laying on the couch no, with no, no, my no. dad watching a funny video <clears throat> and Colin texted me and my dad said and I quote why Who's is he texting stuck? you oh. so and I said I have no idea and then now we're getting married yeah I have a lot of memories and distinct memories of Mally but if we're going back that that early, it would probably be the one time I was afraid to, once we started, like, I guess, hanging out with each other, I was afraid to kiss her. So. Tell him why. You thought I was going to slap you. Well, I just didn't know how quick she usually does things. Like, you know, like how quick the first kiss should be or, like, you know, second date. So I was just, like, very nervous and scared about it so yeah it was the first night we kissed was on her front porch uh, and it was just like the movies we closed the door and we both fell back on the door like oh my gosh right. I, it was so magical so, oh my gosh, <laughs> but no no it, that's probably my, after i slapped him in the face yeah so it was very yeah i would say that would be my like first good memory my favorite memory is when ryan hit some pedestrians <laughs> On our way to the beauty game, recording our podcast. Okay. Um, Dang, brother. So, we would always walk in at the same time, both late to class. And, but Ryan would always be a little bit later than me. And he was late one day and had to sing a song. Our teacher made him sing a song so that he didn't have to go to the office. And that was probably, like, my first memory. We need to find the video and post it. Yeah. What do you mean, find it? We both have it on our phones. Oh, okay. No, go straight. Okay, Ron, are you in a spot that you can share? 
Um, my first memory, there's like a few little ones, but we didn't really get to know each other. And I'll skip to like when we kind of got close. And it was in senior year, and uh, we were in a class that didn't do any work. So we would go outside and look for four leaf clovers. Yeah. Basically, we the did. whole class. And that's my, that's like my first memory. Yeah. Sweet. sweet. We're happy Ron's finally made his debut. Thankful he has almost safely brought us to the UT game. We hope that you all have enjoyed getting to know him. I'm sure he'll be back very shortly for something. If you all like him or not, let us know if you like him. Okay, guys. Do you have anything else? Ron, do you have any final closing words? Thank you all, and let us know if me and Colin should do an episode by ourselves. And go balls. And go balls. See ya. Love ya. Bye. Bye.